Hello ladies and gentlemen, and in today's video I have come somewhere very, very special. Today we're actually taking a trip into the heart of Middle Earth. I'll see you after this. Hello ladies and gentlemen, yes today I have come somewhere, I've come to a medieval village. Uh, which is a place in the Cotswolds called Stow on the Wall. And as a photographer who lives in the Cotswolds, do you think that this was somewhere that I would have been before? But actually, I haven't. I completely missed it out. And um, that's a real shame because we're going to see something today that is right out of Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Um, and when I say that, I mean that there's a good chance that it actually influenced Tolkien uh, when he was writing Lord of the Rings, in particular, uh, when he was talking about hobbits. And uh, what we've, we've come to here to, to Stow on the Wold to see the, uh, now I can't remember the name of the church, it's St. Edward's, I think, uh, door, uh, which has got some trees growing around it. And it looks like a hobbit hole. It looks like a, uh, some people call it the elf door, some people call it the hobbit door. It's really the back door, I think, but it's glorious. And I can't wait to take a picture of this. Ever since I saw uh, that this was a thing, I thought there's a composition there and I want to take it. And so that's what we're going to do today. So here it is uh, behind me. Hopefully you can see it, the, the famous Tolkien door, um, which is uh, basically a normal church door, but it's surrounded by yew trees. Yew trees, of course, are uh, very popular for uh, healing in the uh, pre-Christian uh, Druidish uh, tradition. Try saying that when you're drunk. Um, they were always to do with, with uh, helping and healing and, and stuff. So perhaps it's not um, a, a surprise to see them surrounding the door to a church. I don't know, because many Christian traditions were taken from previous uh, faiths and, and, and um, uh, th th things. I'm really not explaining this very well, but anyway, this is the door that we're going to take. And before I've even got the camera out, I've been looking around to see if there's any compositions. And what I noticed, I don't know if you can see it down here. Let me see if I can back up enough and if the camera will still track me. Down here, you've got some really nice sort of blotches of light uh, that are that are landing on that route and I think we're going to set the camera up down by that route and what I really want is to look up at the door and get a nice sort of triangular system uh, to, to, to this photo. I'll explain why a little later but first of all I'm going to set this camera up down here so you'll be able to see the shot that I'm going to take. Okay so I've composed an image and I have got that you might be able to see it on the screen right now. Um, what I've, I've done at the bottom left hand side of the frame just there, uh, we've got our tree root system and we're going to be bracketing this shot and there's a reason that we're going to be bracketing it. Okay, so look at where this is now. This is roughly in uh, properly exposed. Um, if you look at that now, you can see actually that it, it looks fine. It looks good. It looks what you, like what you would expect. But down here, all of this area is completely blown out. And you're not going to get anything other than that because the, the, we've got really dark areas and really light areas at the same time. So these bits where the sun is shining on there, if we just take a picture of that, we're going to get completely uh, blown out uh, details in there. But we want details in there. Um, and so that's uh, why, uh, why I framed it like that. Now, the other thing to remember here as well is we're not at 10 mil at the moment. This is, this, obviously, I'm using the 10 to 24 mil uh, lens because it's perfect for this sort of thing. Uh, and if I bring this out here, this is what 10 mil looks like, which isn't bad. But if I got up much closer to this to actually frame the shot the way that I'd want it, I'd get th this pool where the roots are would be um, almost a, a little bit more bulbous. They'd be a little bit more in the forefront of the frame. Something else to remember here. Now, the way that I've got it framed up at the moment, what you can see on screen at the moment is what the camera can see at 10 mil. And we're not actually going to shoot at 10 mil. I'm going to bring this in a little bit. Uh, and what you'll be able to see here is when we get to this point, maybe around about here, where we can start to see all of this light that's down at the bottom. Uh, we've got a good amount of tree in there on the on this uh, left hand side. We don't want too much extra, but we want to show the whole tree. And we've got enough of this bit over here as well so that we can see behind uh, the door. And we can see kind of the, the, the setting that the door is in. Um, we've also got, there's this lovely, lovely, lovely bit of light there, just there, look, that's, uh, that's just on the door. That's a perfect uh, highlight for us uh, to get. And I'm wondering now, now that I'm seeing this, if actually this might be a better shot if it's, if it's over here uh, a little bit more. And maybe we do pull that out just a touch. 
there we go. Ooh. <laughs> Now, I've also got another new toy that I'm playing with and I really shouldn't be uh, playing with it today because uh, I forgot to bring uh, the Allen keys that you need to make sure that it's it's stable. Let me show you what this thing is because it's brilliant. So what we've got there is this kind of Z bracket, uh, which I'm sure you've seen before. Now, I originally saw Thomas Heaton using something like this um, and I kind of ignored it because most of the landscape photographers that you see on YouTube, they just use uh, whatever, maybe some of them use leveling plates and things, uh, but most of them just use a ball head and they're perfectly happy with that. But I've had this issue uh, on more than one occasion where I've leveled off my ball head. And what I found is that the camera itself, when I want to take a picture, I then have to tilt the ball head uh, in order to to do it. And that stops the camera being level. So you've got to level that up using the, uh, the settings inside the camera. However, what this thing allows me to do is to set the ball head straight. And this is just gives me up, down, tilt forward, tilt back movement. So I can make that flat surface. I can put this on there and then I can manipulate the camera up or down the way that I want to. If you're going side to side, if you're a big fan of those kind of Dutch angles, then you've got to do something a little bit different. And actually manipulating the uh, ball head is not necessarily the worst thing to do. But the first time I've used it, uh, I've modified it slightly because I've put some Arca Swiss plates on it so that it's easier to use with the camera and with the L bracket and everything I've got. But I'm actually pretty pleased with that. I just have to remember next time to bring the Allen keys so I can tighten it. Anyway, let's get back on with the composition. Okay, so I've got to be a little bit careful about this, but we've got our composition sorted out. And actually what you'll be able to see in this composition is something uh, that I think, it, it's a nice demonstration of a compositional technique. And what I'm doing here is I'm using a triangle. Now, if you saw, I, I, hopefully I've got some pictures of the door and you'll have seen the kind of the, the area that it's in. The door itself isn't particularly big. I'd say that the peak of that door is about six foot and that's it. Uh, which means that actually the, 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 where the, the arch comes to a rest, you're probably uh, a, a about five footish, maybe a bit less. Um, and, and so it looks very small. But what we're doing here is we're framing the door using a triangle. And you can see where the triangle is. It's across here and it's going up. The slant is up like that and then another one up like that. And what that does, this is called a worm's eye view. And what it does is it brings, a lot of people say it brings more drama to it, but what's really happening is that we're taking the subject and we are imbuing it with more authority. We are saying that this door is important. Yes, it adds drama, but the reason that it adds drama is really because we are uh, showing the door at the biggest that it can possibly be from a really low position. And if you think about this, it makes a lot of sense. If you, when you were a kid and you looked up at a teacher and they were some of the tallest people that you'd ever seen, they have a lot of authority because of that. You have a certain level of perhaps fear or intrepidation until you get to know the teacher because they've got, you know, they're, they're much taller than you. Uh, however, uh, when you are older and you look down on a child and they look up at you, you know, you, you see them as being less is the wrong thing. That's not really what I wanted to uh, get out of it, but, but you see them as being subservient because they're smaller. That's a psychological way that we work. Now, what we've got here is we've got the door, we're seeing it right down below, pointing up, we're giving all of the prominence to the door in this shot. And in more, most importantly, to this area around here, which is kind of what we're, um, uh, we're using as a, as a kind of a guide into, into the shot. So this root system here is a guide in, into the tree. And you see that it actually, it fits in with this first angle of the triangle there, if you make the triangle across like this. So you've got a triangular composition, giving a lot of prominence to the door, making the door seem more important than in real life it might actually be. And that means that you've got this really lovely dramatic door. Now I'm gonna turn this video off here and switch back on to bracketing, just let you know what uh, the settings are, we're doing a three shot exposure on bracketing. Um, I am focusing on, uh, you probably won't be able to see it now I've turned the video off. Uh, I'm focusing on the far tree. We're at F8, so that should mean that it gets all of that in, in focus. And we're on a 60th of a second. If I make sure I've got my 
two second timer on as well, which I have, and make sure the composition is the composition that I want because there's a little bit of a difference uh, between video uh, and photo. I think I can pull in a little bit here. Yeah, I can. I'm going to focus that up, press the button, and let it go. Well, quite honestly, I could not have asked for a better day. Uh, really, I couldn't. The weather is great. It's actually quite sunny, but because of where we are, those little pools of light, they're perfect. They're absolutely perfect for the composition I want. I'd love to come back here uh, later on at night as well, at blue hour, when perhaps when they've got that light lit up so that you have, um, uh, you know, a little bit more drama to it, perhaps. I don't know, but it's been a really lovely day and it's great coming to a location like this and, and seeing something that you don't normally uh, get to see and something, of course, which has influenced um, real art throughout the world, which is brilliant. Um, anyway, uh, we're going to see the picture that I actually ended up with in a minute. But before we do, I just want to tell you why this video may be a bit shorter than normal. And if it hasn't, why I probably need to change the way that I'm making videos. Anyway, um, this weekend, in fact, today, the day that this video is dropping, I will be in the middle of a 24 hour live stream of Minecraft, of all things, for uh, Macmillan. Macmillan is a cancer charity that they help people financially, they help people medically, and they help people emotionally uh, deal with cancer. Not just uh, the, the uh, people who are diagnosed with cancer, but the families around them. They give real support at a time when people really need it. Um, we are playing Minecraft for Macmillan, 24 hours um, of, of this one game. We've been building up for it for the last couple of weeks, live streaming on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, if you can, please, please do give a little bit of money to help Macmillan. I've got a link in, be the first thing below will be a link to, to just giving um, it's it's a just giving page, so you know the money is going straight to the charity. We really would appreciate it if you can give a little bit. You know, if you find the videos that I put out are useful, I would rather you donate a little bit of money to that than to go somewhere else and, and give them money for something that you possibly don't want, but just happens to give me some affiliate money in, uh, in, in the meantime. I would really rather you do that. Having said that, uh, that is it for this particular video because this was the reason that I came here to get this door, to get this shot, to start a journey actually of, of taking shots because they are in the Cotswolds and because I am in the Cotswolds at the same time. I hope you enjoyed it. But before we go, let's take a look at the final image. Here it is, that final door image. Now, a lot of Photoshop work went into creating this, and I have a few more of them as well, which you'll be able to see in the community tab over the coming week or on Instagram if you follow me over there. But I was really thrilled with this. I wanted to get that fantasy look. I wanted to give this feeling of a door that leads you off into adventure, and I think, I hope, I captured that. And if you're stuck doing photography at the wrong time of day, this sort of shot is fairly easy to get and work with in Photoshop. It really expands the possibilities of what you're doing. Now, eagle-eyed viewers amongst you will notice that I decided to crop in on this shot in the end, but notice how that root system is right at the forefront of where your eye is drawn. And that's because it's nearest to the camera and it's the lightest thing in the frame. Now, notice how your eye travels up that branch of the tree and where the triangle of the image is formed. I'd love to know what you think about this in the comments. But that's it for this particular video. Please leave a like, and if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and join me on my photography adventures. Until next time, thanks ever so much for coming along, and don't forget, keep taking those photos.